trying to grow these platforms now is that there's such a a distrust in quote unquote the experts happening around because you know people have kind of been backstabbed so many times for lack of a better word yeah it's it's so it's the fool me once you know shame on you fool me twice shame on me um we've been we saw that with with covid like you said and the problem is a lot of us who are are thinking logically about it really said what you just said that it's going to take us five years maybe 10 years to actually lock you know knock down what really happened and what were the beneficial things but with what we have created as a society with social media and the internet and um and going away from tangible handheld publications to online publications is uh and and monetizing those publications is that news media sites have to get it out first because they have to be the first click and and everybody wants to click on that that first headline because that's how they make their money and so what gets the clicks well the most outlandish kind of things you can think of Um, so those headlines started to come out uh, especially during covid and we were all in our homes there was nothing else to do but get on the internet and see who was saying things about covid or about trump or you know the the upcoming election and so a lot of publications just ran with with anything and everything um and this is something i said recently on on the podcast is that um we're, when we're seeing it right now uh we there was a report on uh, all over the media that said intelligence analysts believe that covid came from the wuhan lab in china uh and that's that is a true statement but there is a lot of nuance in that statement because it's not every intelligence analyst and i think intelligence analysts like myself and those officials who are in the community need to do a better job of explaining what they're actually saying as opposed to saying yeah this is what i think this is the most probable cause and so you should report that i think this is actually a question i wanted to ask you so i'm glad you brought it up and i think it's important for my listeners my viewers to to hear this can you define military intelligence? Because I did listen to that clip and that podcast episode where you kind of highlighted this. And I think a lot of people get confused on military intelligence or just intelligence in general, how that's actually defined and what you were just kind of highlighting there. It's not a one for one. If intelligence says this, that's what it is. So could you run through that really quick? Yeah. So all really intelligence is, um, and you have we have a whole intelligence process but all basic from very basic it is pulling in data taking information kind of pulling together all of that assessing what that information says building an intelligence product and then offering those insights so you go from information to intelligence but you can't do anything with that until it's actionable. So we we talk about actual intelligence and that's where insights come from. So in its purest form, you know, all information can become intelligence. So you're pulling all kinds of data together. Um, you, You read through all the data or you populate data on the map and then you formulate, it is still at that point an opinion. So you, you formulate your own analysis which is still an opinion. And you kind of base it off of, uh, the way I do it is I have a probable, possible, and doubtful scenario. So you pull out a scenario, let's say Russia's, Russia, you, you make a comment, Russia is going to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. And through all the data that you see, what, where do you put that? Do you, is it doubtful, po- is it possible, or is it probable? And that sort of possible, probable, doubtful, that's kind of the intelligence that you're looking for. So the way, um, let's say, the the current intelligence that came out about the the origins of COVID-19, that was at a low probability. Um, So people said, well, how can it be at a low probability, but that was the most likely 
scenario, according to these intelligence professionals? Well, it's because every other scenario was of low probability, but it was of lower probability than that one. So if you're looking at all of that, we still don't know. We still don't have proof of any of it that has come out in the open source. Uh, so when intelligence analysts are, are telling a journalist or a media person kind of these statements, they need to caveat it with how that came, how they came to that conclusion and where that fits on a scale of probability. Because when you say, yeah, we think that it came from, you know, the Wuhan lab, that's the headline. That's what's going to be run. Intelligence officials believe that's where it came from. Uh, within intelligence analysis, we have what's called the analysis of competing hypotheses. And so what happens in there is exactly what it sounds. You will take all these different hypotheses, uh, and I'll stick with COVID just to, to break it down. So it came from this animal, came from uh, the wet market, came from the Wuhan lab. And you analyze all of those hypotheses and you come out with what you think as the analyst with all the data, what is going to be the most likely scenario. That one intelligence agency decided it was most likely it came from the Wuhan lab. Um, other agencies, there are others within the U.S. intelligence community who don't believe that, who have done that same analysis of competing hypotheses and say that it came from an animal or the wet markets. So right now we still, factually, we don't know. We can all form our opinions or our analysis, but we don't know. 